Hello, Hamilton. It's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and start tackling your own to-do lists around the home. I am Just Ask Bob. Welcome to the Just Ask Bob show. On today's show, a little bit of a continuation from last month. We've got our kitchen. It's still set up in the prop stage. We've got the rest of the tiled wall up. We're going to be teaching you how to grout in true Just Ask Bob style and fashion. Let's start with an email. Hello, Bob. I grouted my tiles and now I cannot remove the residue. I think I may have left the grout on a little bit too long before wiping it off. Bob, what can I do to remove the grout residue? Uh, it's hard as a rock, please help. Uh, Andrea, Stony Creek, Ontario. Thank you for the question, Andrea. By the way, this is an old one, but I figured it would tie in well with this show because last month we tiled the wall, so today we're actually gonna apply grout. Now, you have to understand, grout, you have to follow the instructions on the package. Grout will dry to like a concrete consistency. So let's go over some of the tools we're gonna need for the project today. Now, it's important to have a china marker. I'll show you a little bit later on why you wanna have this. This is the only thing you should use to mark your tile when you're using wet cuts. We're gonna need a drill, preferably a cordless drill. We're gonna need a paddle style mixer. This one we'll be using to mix the grout. Now also equally important, you're gonna need a grout float and lots of, uh, lots of strength. You're gonna be passing and passing this continuously. When it comes to doing the proper job with grouting, honestly, it's all about penetration. If you haven't got penetration, you've got nothing. You want the grout to penetrate right to the back of the wall, whatever the substrate, whatever the surface is. You want a nice, tight, filled, packed joint. Now, when you're grouting, you're gonna need a sponge. Forget the kitchen sponge, I don't recommend that at all. You're gonna use a professional sponge, you're gonna work like a professional. This sponge has two different sides to it. This is great for getting in there and really scrubbing the grout as it's hardened. And then with this side, you wipe smooth. You'll need some pails, preferably two to three pails full of cool, clean water. Now, if we take a moment to talk about grout, there's two types. There's non-sanded grout, which is what we're gonna be using on today's show. Then there's sanded grout. Now the easy way to differentiate the difference, you know, with what grout you need depending on what your application is, if you're doing wall tile, you're gonna use non-sanded grout. Another way to look at it is if the grout joint is up to three millimeters or an eighth. If you're doing floor tile, more than often, even if it's a tight joint with floor tile, you're gonna wanna use sanded grout because the sand in the grout is what gives it the strength. So that's important with the floor, you want strength. We'll show you in a little bit how to mix this. Now we've also got the caulking. Again, later on in the show, we're gonna show you where the caulking applies. Now based on last month's show, we've had a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls come in. So I'm gonna reenact a few uh, segments from last month's show. The one that I got the most comments on was using the wet tile saw. Now a lot of times you're gonna have to cut your tile to a very odd shape. So there's a trick to doing it. We're gonna show you on a couple of tiles. Now if I can take a moment to show you my prop here from last month. Now if you remember on the last show, we tiled the wall. We worked very carefully around the outlets. Now as far as the outlets, let me take a moment to pull one of the covers off. Because really, if you want to do a nice job, I mean, besides having straight, nice joints, you want your outlet cover to fit perfectly. This is where most homeowners get it wrong. And it's unfortunate because if you're patient, you can do a good job. Now, I like to call these the ears of the outlet. This has to sit on the tile. It's imperative. Your cut cannot be oversized. If everything fits nicely, the cover fits right on top, you've got a perfect job. Now, if you really do have trouble with these cuts, they do sell um, oversized outlets. They're approximately a quarter inch wider and a quarter inch taller, but then you may also have a problem that if these ears aren't sitting on the tile, your outlet's gonna wanna fall back in. So be careful, pull the covers off, make sure the power's off. I built the prop so it's not live, but you wanna make sure power is off because you're gonna be dealing with grout and you're gonna be dealing with water. Now another thing is you have to be absolutely clean. When you're laying the tile, 
the, the adhesive or the thin set, depending what you're using, is going to want to ooze out. So you have to use the straight edge of the putty knife and make sure to clean out any debris. I mean, ideally, you want these joints empty. Any little bit of debris here, if you want to focus in, just scratch it off. You don't want anything that can contaminate the color. Now, in this particular case, we've got some type of a beige color. I went with something to contrast. That way, obviously, for the viewers watching today, you can see a bit of contrast. You get an idea of what it looks like. Now, we talked about this on last month's show. You don't want your tile touching the countertop, and you also do not want to fill this joint with grout. These were the spacers we put in from last month. So now you've got an area where, at the end of the job, you're going to fill it with waterproof silicone. In my particular case, I always prefer using clear. This will give you flexibility. If the building or the structure wants to settle slightly, you're not going to have this against the countertop. Also makes it very easy if you ever have to pull the countertop off and replace it. Now, let's talk about mixing. Grout does also come pre-mixed, but I don't recommend it. And please, I have lots of experience, nearly a decade experience in this field. You're better off to mix the product yourself. You'll get a better consistency. And most importantly, generally when you mix them yourself, they're a higher quality. When they come in the little tub and they're pre-mixed, it's usually, it's a lesser quality. You're getting convenience. So you're sacrificing quality for convenience. Pop open the bag. So you want to make sure, always add the powder first, and then you're slowly going to add the water. Clean, it must be clean water. My method is always add the least amount of water. You can gradually add more water, you know, as you go. Now I'm going to start mixing this up. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to start grouting. ready to play, then we are ready to pay. Kiwanis TV Bingo coming your way every Monday night, 7 p.m., only on Cable 14. Check out KiwanisHamilton.com for all the details or Cable14.com for a listing of vendors nearest you. Cable 14 is funded by Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable, and Source Cable Limited, working with you to build a better community. Travis. Loser. You alright, man? Yeah. Lead on. Character. Pass it on. When you're From the foundation for a better life. On an average, we need two to three snacks a day. So it's important to have healthy snacks that are nutritious, satisfying, and provide you with a good source of energy. A healthy option like fruit packed in fruit juice with no preservatives or artificial sweeteners is a no-fuss, grab-and-the-go snack and an easy way to increase the amount of fruit you eat each day. Snacking, we sure like to do it. So let's make it a healthy option. Until next time, keep fit Body and have fun. Break. Body break. Welcome back to the show. We're just putting the finishing touch it, cut touches to the grout here. Now the grout, it's important to understand, you want to mix grout, toothpaste consistency. See how it stands up on its end? Toothpaste consistency. That's going to give it the strength it requires and it's going to give you a really good fill. Now if you're just tuning into the show, we've got our prop here from last month where we taught homeowners how to lay tile, how to do the nice cuts around the outlets. Today we're going to be teaching you how to finish your project, how to insert the grout. 
Now, once you mix it up, as always per the manufacturer's instructions, now so many homeowners, they really don't like to read what's on the box. But trust me, unless you've been doing it for 10 years like I have, read the package, please. This needs to sit for about three to five minutes. Let's all the chemicals set, blend together. Then it'll be the proper consistency to start grouting. So let's set that aside for the moment. Now, I want you to know I've got the world's easiest website to remember, justaskbob.com. So think about it. You're watching the Just Ask Bob show on Cable 14. Well, it's www.justaskbob.com. If you miss an episode, if you miss a show, or if you just want to watch it again to get a better understanding of what I'm trying to teach you, visit the website. There's a world of information for you there about the products and services, different materials, and of course, all of our shows are on there. Now we also have a Facebook contest running where you get to win Bob for the day in your home to teach you a DIY project of your choice. I will show up to your home, bring you a tool belt, maybe not my kid's tool belt unless you got a 16 inch waist. No, no, we're gonna bring you a full size tool belt. We're gonna help you tackle your to-do lists at home. We're gonna try to teach you some repairs and renovations. So it's important. First step of the contest is like us on Facebook, give us a little bit of information, then follow up by a direct email to me. And this is important now. I want facts. I don't just want to know what the renovation is. I want to know why it hasn't been done, why it's not getting done, why nobody in your household's chipping away at it. So let us know, and over the next few months, before the season ends, I may be paying a visit to your home. Now, really important, I always tell people, especially when you're working your own home, let's be clean. Don't work like an animal. We're gonna cover up the countertop to protect it. This can be a bit of a messy task. So lay out some cardboard. I mean, I get complaints coming in by email at the office every week about how contractors are leaving a mess, you know, scratching a new countertop. So obviously, it's your own home. If anybody's going to work clean and neat, it should be the homeowner. Cover things up. Now we've got our grout. Let's get that up here. Now, this is the float. Now, if I can really try to drill this home and explain it to you, if you don't get penetration, if you don't get this grout, right to the back of that tile, you've got nothing, it's gonna fall out. So it's all about the penetration, work in a small area, and a lot of forearm strength. You wanna push. So I'm going on a 45 degree angle, then back again, then again, at least three passes. You don't just give it a little hit, nothing's gonna work. Keep pushing and pushing. you know what I meant about cleaning the wall, cleaning the tile, you know, there's a lot of color pigmentation in here. You don't want any residue left over from uh, the thin set or the adhesive. You don't want anything contaminating the color. You want purity in the color. Now, you've also got to be neat about it. Each time you finish a section, clean off your float. Scrape off the excess and then get all the excess off the wall. Trust me, you don't want to be sponging that after. It'll be take, take you a week to do it. Clean off the excess. And then continue. Now I do this for a living and I can still feel it in my forearms. So if you're not feeling it, you're doing something wrong. back and forth in both directions, at least three times. Now, like we talked about on last show, nothing in here, nothing at all. If you fill it here, that's gonna crack as the wall eventually settles. Everything settles, gravity takes its toll on everything. So you wanna be careful. Now when you're working around the outlet, you wanna be careful just to fill in the joint. See how I'm packing it behind the ear? Just like that. You don't want to get it inside the outlet. Scrape off the excess sometimes and you don't need that much in the way.
smack it in the bottom. Now don't worry, a little bit that you get in there you can pull out afterwards. It's not that bad when it's a small area, but when you've got a huge kitchen or a large bathroom to do, it would help it would help to have help. So that's where the husbands can kick in and help the wives, or vice versa. It does pack in easily, but you have to make sure to go by both passes, or else you're just getting it on the surface. Hence, no penetration. Constantly keep the tool clean. You want to put it flat, and you want to scrape all the excess off. You'll see later on when we start sponging this why. If you leave all the residue, it's just going to be too difficult. Again, slow down around the outlets. Lots of pressure. Back again the other way. Now this will stain, that's why it's very important to cover the countertop, especially if it's a brand new countertop. Now for getting nice and close to the bottom, again I'm going to clean the float off. I'm just going to put a little bit on and you get right in there. Now I'm working left to right. Now you want to go the other way, right to left. Many people don't do this and then what's going to happen is as your grout hardens and months pass on, you're going to get little hairline cracks and then the grout will want to separate and fall out. Very important that you fill in the little areas at the bottom, little small misses at the top. Everything looks pretty full. Now clean it off again. Now remove all the excess. Now to remove the excess, you want a, tall, uh, a straight angle. Scrape everything off. This will be a big help for afterwards. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to let this set for a few minutes. While we let this set, because it does have to harden up, so this has to harden up a little bit, then we're going to take the pail and the sponge, we're going to start cleaning it up. While we let it set, let's talk a little bit about what we use to install the tile. What we use to install the tile, I've got a little bit of a display for you here, because we've got a lot of questions about this last time. This particular tile is installed, 3 16 by 1 quarter notch wall tile for 6 by 6. So you can see the notch. That's specifically made for the tile to sit on. That's the perfect size. Now over here we've got quarter by three eighths by one quarter notch. This is for thin set only. This is for wall tile from eight inch to 16 inches large, which would be floor tile. Now if you use this application on this tile, when you embed the tile, all the excess is gonna squish out of the edge. So that's why it's very important. Use the proper notch and use the proper adhesive. We're going to take a quick break, we're going to let this set up a bit, then we're going to show you how to sponge it off right when we come back. We are Cable 14. We are Cable 14. We are Cable 14. We are. Cable 14. We are Cable 14. We are Cable 14. Your community, only on cable, only on Cable 14.
Meatball on white. Come on, come on. I haven't got all day here. Next. While we're still young. Next. You know, you told me you wanted mustard. Get out of here. Time's up. Back of the line. Hey, excuse me. What? Great sandwich. Thanks. You didn't have to be so Compliments. Pass them on. From the Foundation for a Better Life. Well, when I went to my first meeting, I was really scared. I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? It is possible to stop doing drugs. The proof's at the meetings, but you got to get there first. Welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. If you're just tuning in on today's show, we're teaching you how to mix grout. We've got some lovely grout mixed here to complement our white tile. We've just finished grouting the wall tile installation. We're gonna let that set now. It does need to harden up for about 15, 20 minutes, at which point we can start tooling it with the sponge and the water. Now I'm gonna take a moment to answer some questions that we received a, quite a volume of questions all based on last month's show. Last month's Just Ask Bob show, we taught you how to cut tile, how to use the uh, proper tools and techniques to install the tile, but the great bulk of questions came in over the uh, wet saw. We introduced quite a lot of tools and tips last month, but the winner was the wet tile saw. Let me show you for a moment here Many times when tiling, you're gonna have to cut these odd U-shapes. It's very difficult to cut these, but I'm gonna show you. We're gonna cut one for you now, and then I'm gonna show you how they all snap apart. This is like taking candy from a baby. If you've done it properly. Now we showed you last time we had the tile nippers. That edge can be cleaned off, but in most cases that's gonna be hidden by uh, your, electrical cover, uh, your electrical outlets, the cover plates. Let's show you another one here. The most difficult part with this one is as you go in with the blade, sometimes this end breaks off and you wanna keep this. So again, that's why whatever your tiling project is, keep at least 10% extra tile on hand. That does not look easy on television. Remember, I've been doing this for 10 years, so make sure you got lots of extra tile. Now, let's assume it's a two gang electrical box. You got a switch and an outlet. That pretty well will size it up. Please don't ever just leave seams here and try to add extra joints. People are gonna judge you on your work around the electrical outlets and switches. That's the beauty of it, especially pertaining to a kitchen. Now that was so cool, I'm gonna do it one more time. There we go. Okay, back to some real production now. Let's work on our grouted wall. Now we talked about this earlier. Please use the proper tools. This is a professional grout sponge because again, one side is just a sponge, it's normal. The other side's got some grab to it. Now you must have clean water at all times. You're gonna dip the sponge and here's the trick. Get all the water out of it. No ifs, ands, or buts. As bone dry as you can get it. Now obviously start with the rough side first. Now, once you've got most of it off, let's just finish right to one edge. Okay, you have to constantly keep dipping it and wringing it out. That's very, very important. But in your first few passes with the rough side, and again, please make sure the power is off. You know, we've got water. Water and electricity don't mix. This is my prop, it's not live. So again, use the rough side to get to the majority out. Now you know what I meant about the float. You don't wanna leave a big mess. You'll be sponging it forever. So once you get the majority off, Okay, we're just about there. 
Once you get the majority off, again, rinse out the sponge, and now we're gonna switch sides. What we're gonna do now is what I like to refer to as styling the joints. You wanna go in the direction of the grain. Look at that. That's a perfect joint. Not so perfect. That's better. That's how you want your joints to end up. Now you will find the occasional spot, and I must have packed these in really well, but if you find the occasional miss, have your grout still handy and you can fill it in. Now this process, it's gonna take you a while, again, depending on how big your area is. Okay, there we go, we have a miss. So you wanna take a little bit of grout. It's not gonna kill you. You can apply it with your finger. You wanna fill it in. Again, we had a little spot with no penetration. And like I said, and like I keep telling the Hamilton viewers, it's all about the penetration. You're not gonna have a good job. Now, anything that you may happen to get into the bottom, you use your potty knife. You want it completely cleared out. Whether it's grout, whether it's adhesive, whether it's thin set, if it's a bathroom above a, ba a, a, a shower or a bathtub, you want that absolutely clear. We've got a structured surface, we've got another solid surface. We don't want the two touching each other. We want a flexible seal throughout. It's not difficult. It does take patience. And you constantly have to keep wringing this out. Well, because all you're, all you're doing is you're spreading the contamination around again. So we're trying to clean this as best as we can. You don't want any contamination on it. Now even if you zoom in on the pail, pail's starting to change, water's starting to change color. So eventually at some point, it is very important to change the water. Now, once again, if you want to follow this at a much slower pace, this show and all our shows, they're on our website, www.justaskbob.com, or send me an email, pick up the phone, and give me a simple phone call. I'm here for you, Hamilton. Until next time, get up, get off the couch, and start tackling your own to-do lists around the home. Thank you.